Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Office of Consumer Credit Commissioner's stakeholder meeting to discuss rule amendments on fees for regulated lenders. My name is Matt Nance, and I'm the OCCC's General Counsel. I'm joined by other members of the OCCC staff, including Commissioner Leslie Pettyjohn, Director of Consumer Protection, Huffman Lewis, Assistant Director of Exam Operations, Carl Hubenthal, and our paralegals, Ginger Harmon and Nico Fisher, who are acting as our meeting organizers. We're holding this meeting through an online webinar, and I wanna thank everyone for joining us. Uh, getting input from stakeholders is a really important part of our rulemaking process, and these meetings help us make sure we produce the best rules possible. Our webinar platform is GoToWebinar. Uh, some of you might be listening on your phones, some might be watching on computers, some may be doing both. For those watching on your computer, there's a questions window where you can submit questions to staff. And if you have technical questions about using the webinar, uh, you can type them in and Ginger will try to answer those. Uh, we are discussing a pre-comment draft of rule amendments that's available on the OCCC's webpage for recent and upcoming rules. On that webpage, you can see the draft rules by clicking on the link for regulated lender fee rules. If you have any comments on the rule amendments, you can go ahead and type those in at any time, and I'll be getting to those in just a few minutes. And if you're on a computer with a mic, there's a function allowing you to raise your hand, and we can let you make a comment verbally. These rule amendments would adjust the maximum administrative fee and acquisition charge for regulated consumer loans under Chapter 342, subchapters E and F of the Texas Finance Code. First, in Section 83.503, the changes would adjust the maximum administrative fee for a consumer loan under Chapter 342, subchapter E. Subchapter E consumer loans tend to be larger personal or secured loans, averaging around $5,000. The legislature has set out maximum interest rates in Subchapter E, and these rates vary by loan amount, but tend to be in the range of 18 to 30 percent. The administrative fee is an upfront non-interest fee that compensates the lender for the administrative costs of closing the loan and providing money to the borrower. In 2013, the legislature authorized the Finance Commission to adopt a rule setting the maximum administrative fee. The Finance Commission adopted the $100 maximum in 2013, and it has not been adjusted since then. Under the draft amendments, the maximum administrative fee would be set at $125 through June of 2025, and would then be increased annually based on the Consumer Price Index, or CPI. CPI is a measure of the change over time in prices paid by consumers, and is widely used as a measure of inflation and the overall price level in the economy. The methodology in the draft amendments is similar to the process that the Texas Legislature has directed the OCCC to use in adjusting rate bracket amounts under Chapter 341 of the Finance Code, as well as fees under Chapter 394 of the Finance Code for debt management services. Since 2020, the OCCC has received a number of informal and official comments from stakeholders dealing with the fee and costs for Chapter 342 consumer loans. After reviewing the input from different sides of the issue, the OCCC believes that objective measures like CPI strongly suggest that overall costs have increased since 2013, and after more than 10 years of going without an adjustment, now is an appropriate time to adjust this fee and ensure it can keep pace with changing costs going forward. Uh, if stakeholders have additional feedback about recent costs, we still want to hear about that as well. So second and similarly, uh, in section 83.605, the changes would adjust the maximum acquisition charge for a consumer loan under Chapter 342, Subchapter F. Subchapter F consumer loans tend to be smaller personal loans, averaging around $780 and currently limited by statute to a maximum loan amount of $1,700, an amount that's adjusted annually based on CPI under the statute. The legislature has limited the interest charge on subchapter F loans, also called the installment account handling charge, to $4 per $100 per month. The subchapter F acquisition charge, similar to the subchapter E administrative fee, is an upfront non-interest fee that compensates the lender for performing administrative activities related to making the loan. In 2013, the legislature authorized the Finance Commission to adopt a rule setting the maximum acquisition charge, and in 2013, the Finance Commission adopted the rule setting the acquisition charge at the lesser of 10% of the cash advance, or $100, and it has not been adjusted since then. 
under the draft amendments, the maximum acquisition charge would be set at $125 through June 2025 and then would be increased annually based on CPI. Again, the OCCC believes that this is an appropriate adjustment to a fee amount that hasn't been changed in over 10 years and that the CPI methodology would help keep pace with changing costs, similar to methods that the legislature has provided for other rate brackets and fee amounts. Um, so that's the summary of the draft amendments. Uh, here's a proposed timeline for the rule amendments. You can see that we're requesting informal pre-comments by this Wednesday, January 31st. We intend to propose the amendments at the Finance Commission's February 16th meeting. Uh, there would be an official comment period during the month of March. We'd present the rule for adoption at the Finance Commission's April meeting, and the rule would be effective in May 2024. This is, of course, a tentative timeline, and all of this is subject to the Finance Commission's approval of the rules. So with that, I've summarized the rule action and I will open things up to comments on the rule amendments. Again, there are two ways to provide your feedback through this webinar. Uh, first, you can type your comment out and send it to us through the webinar's question feature. Or if you're on a computer with a mic, uh, there should be a function allowing you to raise your hand. And if you have a longer written question, feel free to type a quick message into the question field and go to webinar, uh, just explaining that you have a longer message and we can give you some time to type that out. And I'm showing that uh, we have uh, someone who'd like to speak. So um, I uh, show Carl Gallant. Um, Ginger, could you uh, unmute Mr. Gallant? Mr. Gallant, I've unmuted you and you can go ahead and unmute yourself, yourself. and make your comments. And make your comments. Thank you. Can you hear me okay, just to confirm? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nance. My name is Carl Gallant uh, for the Texas Consumer Finance Association. Uh, TCFA represents the interest of traditional installment lenders in Texas, making loans under subchapter F of chapter 342 of the finance code. Uh, TCFA has 144 members representing over 1,650 storefronts uh, in Texas, from small single location family businesses to large multi-office companies. Uh, as a preliminary matter, TCFA is very appreciative of the Commissioner's Office recognizing the rising costs that regulated lenders are facing. Uh, as it was indicated in the presentation, the current acquisition charge was last set in 2013. Uh, during that rulemaking, it was made clear that the acquisition charge for subchapter F loans compensates the lender for the performing the administrative activities related to making the loan. And the charge addresses costs such as rent, utilities, employee wages and benefits, information technology, software and hardware, general office expenses, and the use of resources and efforts to qualify a borrower considering the greater exposure to default among subchapter F consumers. And since 2013, these administrative expenses for lending operations have drastically increased. Uh, as was mentioned, that from September of 2013 to November of 2023, costs have increased 31% based upon the consumer price index. With respect to subchapter F lenders in particular, from 2016 to 2022, industry expenses have increased by 45%, according to filings from their yearly reporting to the OCCC. During that same time frame, from 2016 to 2022, the industry has seen a 35% decline in the number of loans made. You look back to 2013, there's been a 48% decline in the number of loans made. This results in a much higher cost increase on a per loan basis than the consumer price index might indicate. Subchapter F lenders are still largely brick and mortar operations with fixed sunk costs. Their rates are set in statute. The acquisition charge is the tool they use to manage administrative costs. Unfortunately, the increased cost of doing business has far outpaced their ability to manage those costs under the acquisition charge in the current rule. 
Uh, as, as was mentioned, the, the, the current acquisition charge is capped at the lesser of 10% of the cash advance of the loan, or $100. And the current proposal would increase that dollar cap to $125 with a CPI adjustment. And this is certainly helpful, uh, but TCFA respectfully suggests that this only provides relief to a certain segment of loans and lenders. The proposal would not provide relief for loans below $1,000 because the 10% cap would apply to limit that charge at $100. Most lenders make loans below $1,000. Some small, many smaller lenders make more loans below $1,000 than they do above $1,000. So under the current proposal, those lenders would not receive any relief. TCFA respectfully requests that the OCCC consider an adjustment that provides relief across the full spectrum of loan amounts. And specifically, TCFA proposes that the acquisition charge uh, be adjusted to the lesser of 12.5% of, of the cash advance of the loan or $150 with an annual CPI adjustment. This would see, this would result in some economic relief through the full spectrum of loan amounts. For instance, a $400 loan, the acquisition charge, the maximum acquisition charge that is, would increase from $40 to $50. On a $1,000 loan, the maximum acquisition charge would increase from $100 to $125. And for loans of $1,200 or more, the, ac the maximum acquisition charge would be $150. So the this adjustment would apply equitably, equitably across all loan amounts. The bottom line is that some relief is needed. TCFA appreciates the OCCC recognizing that, uh, but respectfully encourages the OCCC to recognize that relief is needed across the full spectrum of loan amounts. This requires adjusting the percentage cap as well as the dollar cap. We look forward to commenting on and working with the commissioner's office through this rulemaking, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk today. All right, thank you, Carl. Right. Thank you, Carl. Uh, we appreciate, uh, those, we comments. appreciate those comments. comments. The, I think one thing that would be helpful is uh, in your comments, if you can uh, point to you know, specific categories of costs that are affected for those kind of smaller loans, that, that may be helpful in, for us in considering um, that proposal. Okay, the, I think the next hand raise I saw in the comments was from Austin Clancy. Um, Ginger, could you unmute Austin Clancy? Thank you. So, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Austin Clancy, and I'm the president of the Texas Consumer Credit Coalition. I'm also vice president, managing director of state strategies for One Main Financial. On behalf of the coalition, thank you for holding this webinar and providing stakeholders with the opportunity to present comments today. The coalition is a member-driven organization comprised of community-based responsible installment lenders that are regulated, licensed, and examined by the Texas Office of Consumer Credit Commissioner in accordance with, with Chapter 342, Subchapter E of the Texas Finance Code. TCCC members have a demonstrated history of safely serving Texas borrowers from our brick-and-mortar locations for over 50 years. The coalition's members provide consumers with many kinds of consumer credit, including traditional installment loans, direct and indirect vehicle financing, and credit for non-vehicle retail customers. The coalition's mission is to provide, excuse me, is to promote the increased availability of quality consumer credit to Texans that is carefully underwritten for an ability to repay. As stated previously, the original $25 administrative fee was enacted 25 years ago in 1999. In 2013, Senate Bill 1251 amended the Texas Finance Code to give the Finance Commission the express authority to review the administrative costs associated with the origination of loans under subchapter, excuse me, under chapter 342, subchapter E, and set a maximum administrative fee. That year, the fee was then increased to $100 under the purview of OCCC as allowed for in statute. The current proposed fee increase to $25 is reasonable considering the decade of change since the last increase. Further, a basic review of inflationary increases indicates that a fee as implemented in 2013 would be $133 in 2024, well above the suggested $25 increase under consideration. 
origination costs for lending for lenders operating under chapter 342 subchapter E include but are not limited to labor software hardware and office space without exception all of these costs have increased significantly over the last decade from the finance commission's initial administrative fee adjustment in 2013. TCCC member companies have experienced a market increase in labor costs since 2013, including enhanced training on technology, te technology investments, fraud prevention, and data and security requirements related to consumer data privacy. Employee pay has raised steadily over the past 10 years so that TCCC member companies can be competitive in the highly competitive Texas job market. As a marketplace, Texas presents unique challenges due to its heavy economic development and population growth, which has caused an increase in the cost of living, further complicating attracting new employees or relocating current employees within the state. Our employee base in Texas is heavily rooted in our branch presence in the state, with TCCC member companies currently operating out of 492 community-based branches. Loan performance is directly tied to our local branch presence, providing consumers with reliable touch point throughout the life of their loan. These facilities have only increased since 2013. For example, a recent Moody's Analytics article shows a near 12% increase in retail lease prices since 2013, with many TCCC member companies' locations being in those retail spaces throughout Texas. Additionally, IT costs have dramatically increased as lenders have had to invest in new data security measures while simultaneously expanding consumer access to account data. From loan application to loan servicing, TCCC member companies have had, an have had to enhance data security protocols to, th to thwart and mitigate cybersecurity threats to consumers' private personal information. Despite our continued commitment to our branch locations, creating secure networks to accommodate work from home scenarios is another nexus between labor and IT costs that contribute to upfront loan costs. Beyond IT and data security needs, compliance concerns remain an evolving obstacle to mitigating upfront loan costs. Large federal efforts, such as implementation of the Military Lending Act protocols for marketing and underwriting integration, complying with the CFPB's vendor management requirements for third-party vendors, for example, lead generation, marketing, print, and print vendors, and changes to comply with the FTC safeguard rule have all required considerable investment. Similarly, basic underwriting has grown beyond a simple review of a consumer's credit history to include new predicted data usage, including utility payments, job history reviews, subscription service payment history, and other alternative data. These data investments allow for more predictive underwriting that, can, that contribute to consumer success in the lending relationship. Offsetting these innovation costs benefit lenders and consumers alike. All these considerations do not account for basic customer service improvements that lenders have had to accommodate, including aiding customers in disputing inaccurate credit reporting information, assisting in identifying issue in identity theft issues, and general fraud considerations that impact the customer's ability to apply for credit. Whether TCCC member companies are making a $3,000 loan or a $12,000 loan, those costs remain the same. Fees designated to offset upfront costs associated with loan applications and underwriting costs must keep pace with external economic factors to ensure continued access to safe and affordable credit for all Texans. TCCC and its member companies will continue to operate in good faith to limit costs to consumers and streamline existing processes to provide consumers with superior services so they can meet their financial goals. We appreciate the OCCC's continued consideration and review of these costs and its willingness to address these important concerns with an increase in the administrative fee. On behalf of the Texas Consumer Credit Coalition, please accept our support for the proposed revision. And I would like to thank uh, Commissioner Pettijan and her staff for the opportunity to present these comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clancy. Okay, we have two written questions. Um, first is a question from Ann Bedore. What specific data did you use to determine that the administrative costs of closing the loan and providing money has changed? So I think the primary piece of data was CPI. We have received a number of comments from uh, different groups on this issue since around 2020. And in reviewing those, some of the um, more specific categories of costs that were mentioned were things, uh, some of the same things Mr. Clancy just mentioned, things like wages, office space, technology. Uh, so in addition to CPI, there were some more specific indexes we took a look at, reading those together with the input we got from stakeholders. But, you know, things like the employment cost index for wages, uh, the commercial real estate price index for office space, um, producer price index for information technology, technical support, and consulting services. 
So those were uh, some of the other objective measures that we've taken a look at in addition to CPI. If uh, stakeholders uh, have other objective measures they can point us to, you know, we are, we want to take a look at that feedback and, and see that. But um, those are some of the uh, items we've taken a look at so far. Uh, second written question from Luke McClanahan. Do you have a soft copy of the OCCC presentation? Um, the recording of this webinar, including the slides, uh, will be posted in a video format. Um, so that, that should make the, um, the presentation available to those who want to view it. Okay, we have uh, next is uh, a hand raise from Tom Hudgens. Um, so Ginger, could you unmute Tom Hudgens? Mr. Hudgens, you've been unmuted. You can go ahead and speak. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Nance. My name is Tom Hudgens. I am the CEO of Western Shamrock Corporation based in San Angelo, Texas. We operate 124 brick and mortar locations in Texas, all making traditional installment loans under subchapter F, chapter 342 of the finance code. I appreciate the OCCC proposing this rulemaking to address the massive rising cost throughout all levels of loan sizes under subchapter F. Specifically in Western's case, a 10 year, 150% increase in cost. I support this effort and encourage the OCCC to consider providing this much needed relief across the full spectrum of loan amounts by adjusting the percentage of the cash advance by which the acquisition charge is calculated in addition to the dollar amount cap. Finally, 10 years ago, during the last acquisition increase, there was unanimous support. I'll repeat, unanimous support for this increase by all parties. Thanks for your consideration. Appreciate your time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hudgens. Okay, we have a third uh, written question from Stephanie Mace. The OCCC states that the fee raise is necessary to capture increase in costs and wishes to tie future fee increases after 2023 to the Consumer Price Index, CPI. Do you believe that there are limitations to CPI that it cannot account for increases in efficiency and technology developments. Well, again, in taking a look at CPI, you know, we understand that it is, if not the most widely used, you know, it, it is certainly a widely used measure for uh, cost increases. And it's something that uh, the Texas legislature has already used in existing legislation. So, um, you know, it's it's something that our office has used in other areas at the direction of the legislature. So that was part of the reason we believe that, that this is a, a widely used and appropriate measure. But again, if there are objective measures that uh, stakeholders can point to that take more account of technology, we're, we'd love to hear about those as well. Okay, we have a, um, a fourth written question. Uh, Brianna Gordley, has the agency considered ways to mitigate the impact of fee increases on consumers? Um, you know, I think the, the consumer perspective is important. Uh, we considered this fee increase a couple years ago. We took some, after hearing the feedback, took some more time to study this. Uh, 
again, we want to we want a proposal that balances uh, ensuring that lenders can recover costs with ensuring that there are effective limitations on this fee that help protect consumers. So that's part of what we are trying to do with this rule. Uh, we definitely welcome feedback on that issue. We have a uh, hand raise from Mark Silence. Um, Ginger, could you unmute Mark Silence? Mr. Silence, um, I've unmuted you. You can go ahead and unmute and make your comments. Mr. Silence, um, you are self muted. So I've unmuted you whenever you're ready. You can go ahead and make your comments. Um, can you hear me now? So, yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. I'm so sorry. No, that's well, okay. my name is Mark Silence. Uh, my name is Mark Silence, and I'm president of Worth Finance Corporation, uh, a regulated lender making loans under subchapter F, uh, chapter 342 of the finance code. Uh, we've been in business since 1976, and we truly appreciate the OCCC and Commissioner Pettijohn's proposing this rulemaking address, uh, addressing the rising costs that regulated lenders are facing. I know our, our costs have risen tremendously. Uh, I support this effort and encourage the OCCC to consider providing relief across the full spectrum of loan amounts by adjusting the percentage of the cash advance by which the acquisition charge is calculated in addition to the dollar amount cap. Uh, feel that this will help the industry across the board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Silence. Um, we have a next hand raise from David Korn. Good afternoon, Mr. Korn. Um, you've been unmuted. You can go ahead and speak whenever you're ready. Hey, Matt, this is David. I think that was user error. I thought I put my hand back down. Oh, okay. Uh, so if if you have if you don't have remarks at this time, we can uh, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that was all the comments that I saw. Ginger, do we have any other written questions or comments through the webinar or hand raises? Not at this oh. time. Oh. oh, I see a hand raise from Doug Clark. Is that right? That's correct. I'll go ahead and unmute okay. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark, you, you're you. unmuted. You can go ahead and speak. Hey, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. Appreciate you having this um, rulemaking pre-comment today. My name is Doug Clark. I work for Loan Express, a company with 20 branches across Texas and headquartered in Dallas. I've worked for this company for 36 years as director of operations. And when you think about how long our, our oldest office has been in business 36 years is not that long the oldest office we have has been in business 93 years in texas uh, we are a regulated lender making loans under subchapter f 342 of the finance code and we are also members of tcfa the texas consumer finance association i'm on this call to express my appreciation encouragement and support to the office of consumer credit commissioner for recognizing the major headwinds that regulated lenders currently face because of rapidly increasing costs year after year. So thank you for surfacing this timely issue. Your proactive desire to maintain a healthy credit ecosystem for Texas, Texans is necessary and appreciated. And finally, I'll echo Mr. Gallant in highlighting the need for a solution that touches the full spectrum of loan amounts made under subchapter F especially those loans that are being made below $1,000 by 
by adjusting the percentage used to calculate the acquisition charge in addition to increasing the dollar amount cap. Thank you again for the opportunity to participate today on this urgent and important rulemaking discussion. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Okay, any other questions or comments through the webinar? Okay, I'm not seeing any. I will wait for about one minute just to make sure there are no other hand raises or comments. Again, uh, if you have a longer written comment, please feel free to type in a quick message saying you have a longer comment and we can uh, give you some time to type that out. Otherwise, I will wait about one minute starting now. Please feel free to raise hand through the um, chat function or type in a question. Okay, I don't see any other hand raises or comments. That's so correct. again, yeah, no other hand raises or comments at this time. Okay, thank you, Ginger. Um, so again, I want to thank everyone for joining us and participating. Uh, as a reminder, rule updates are available on the OCCC website, and we'll also be posting the audio of this meeting, including uh, the the slides uh, of the presentation. We are accepting written pre-comments on these rules until 5 p.m. this Wednesday, January 31st. Please email those to me at rule.comments at occ.texas.gov, which is our email address for rule comments. Uh, thank you all for attending. Please be safe out there, and we will see you next time. Thank you.